Welcome back, everyone. If there's anything out there that needs to be defunded, it's NPR and PBS. It is true that they don't get as much public funding as they used to, but any public funds going to this hate propaganda needs to be taken away. NPR has an obvious bias and obviously do not care about objectivity. And this is made glaringly obvious by the director of NPR's Morning Edition, who claimed that objectivity is a white supremacist concept. Saying, quote, the worth of someone's life is not a question of objectivity. My job and my faith taught me that. Any questions of journalistic objectivity around the worthless of black lives are derived from a system of white supremacy. But absolutely nobody argued that the worthless of somebody's life is a matter of objectivity. If you're an actual, real, professional journalist, objectivity is very important. Why? Because people need to trust what they're hearing from you. If you're openly flaunting that you can't be objective, then you're an activist and people can't trust what they're hearing from you. Because activists have an agenda and their perspective is cloud by their biases. So I ask again, why is NPR getting public money? Sorry for the interruption, but just give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special deal for my subscribers. Let me show you all one of the things that's helping me to look better and feel great. Collagen may be the closest thing that we ever get to a real fountain of youth. And many health experts now agree, consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renewing and revitalizing how you look and feel. So visit my page at www.health with dronetech.com and secure your supply of the best collagen on the market. So back to this anything other than objective NPR article about how essentially people should be burning their white books. This isn't informative, it's venomous and divisive. If you're not sure about it, just take the test. Swap out white for any other group and there's your answer. Oh, but now they're officially redefining racism so that only whites can be racist. So I'm sure crap like this is gonna become the norm. Over at NPR, contributor Juan Videl wrote a piece pushing the idea that people should essentially burn their books written by white authors and replacing those authors with authors of the far left's choosing. Saying that white people should quote decolonize their books. Who knew that all books written by white people are all the same? The same feelings expressed, the same thoughts, all of it the same because white people. Just listen to this and tell me it's not insanely racist. If you are white, take a moment to examine your bookshelf. What do you see? What books and authors have you allowed to influence your worldview? And how you process the issues of racism and prejudice towards the disenfranchised? Have you considered that if you identify as white and read only the work of white authors, you are in some ways listening to an extension of your own voice on repeat? Obviously, there's nothing at all wrong with seeking out a diverse group of authors in order to gain enlightenment about other people's perspectives. However, this author makes a lot of racist assumptions, like the fact that he needs to tell all white people in America to read books written by black authors. Isn't that a pretty broad generalization? I mean, how does he not know that tons of Americans, millions of Americans, aren't already reading books written by black authors? Maybe they're just reading books without any concern with what the skin color is of the author. Maybe the genre they enjoy to read isn't racially or culturally focused. Maybe all books written by black people aren't racially and culturally centered. As if all black people only write books about cultural and racial issues. When I do read a book, it's typically sci-fi or horror, and I have no idea what the skin color of the author is. Why isn't this guy worried about black people reading white authors or Latino people reading white authors? The problem is the sole focus of his article is white people, which is based on his own stereotypes and prejudices. Whether or not black and brown people are reading white authors isn't a concern of his. And for that matter, it's not a concern of mine. This article is just stupid. What's the point of this article? It's either virtue signal or more fodder to incite racial tensions. This is a guy who wrote a book called Rap Dad. Yeah, we listen to a lot of 90s gangster rap in this house too. Maybe I should write a book about it. Here you thought you were learning, imagining, and exploring ideas when you read books. But according to this guy, your main concern when reading a book should be the skin color of the author. I can't think of a single time in my life where I chose to read a book based on the skin color of the author. Anti-racist books will only do a person good if they sign silence themselves first and enter into the reading provided they care enough to do so. Here we go again with this theme of shutting up white people, shutting up dissenting voices. And my job is to shut other white people down when they want to interrupt. My job is to shut other white people down 
when they want to say, oh no, I'm not prejudiced. They have privilege. And until we shut our mouths and we listen to those people who don't. In modern times, label like racist, white supremacist, white nationalist, while occasionally accurate, is mostly just used to shut up political opposition. It's not just so-called white books that they want to rid the world of. It's anything that stands in opposition to their agenda. Just the other day, I was talking to my wife and wondering if the show Cops would be allowed to continue since it shows the reality of crime in America and it humanizes cops. Wouldn't you know it, the next day they cancel cops and other similar shows. This way it's way easier to dismiss and bury crime stats, which will be very useful as police are defunded around the country. Other sentiment is also being banned, with more I'm sure to come. Over at HBO, they've now apparently banned Gone with the Wind. I mean, who really cares because you can go watch it anywhere you want, but it just goes to show how the far left mob is now driving our society. They're even tearing down and beheading statues to fulfill the ISIS-esque flavor of all of this. All I know is that once you start this madness, it doesn't stop. Anyway, that's all for this episode, folks. If you like this video, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my channel and you want to support it, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.